I've been a police officer in Mineral Wells, Texas for going on five years now. If you're wondering, Mineral Wells is about 50 miles west of Fort Worth and has a population of about 16,000. The people here are salt of the earth type people, God fearing, hard working, and kind. But something has always been a little off about them, almost like they're carrying a secret that no one is supposed to know. Mineral Wells becomes a ghost town, no pun intended, after 7 p.m. and driving the streets at night can be downright creepy, even from the safety of my patrol car. In the five years I've been here, I've seen and heard some strange things. Things I don't even believe myself at times. If I hadn't had my own strange experiences when I was a child, I'd probably think I was crazy. But I'm not. And things that happen here are sometimes unexplainable. But they are real. And I'd like to relay one of my experiences to you. If you enjoy, perhaps I can tell you more. Because I have a ton. To understand Mineral Wells, you first have to understand its history. I learned most of this after I visited the local historical society about six months after I moved here. Apparently the town was settled in 1881 by a guy named J.A. Lynch. After Lynch dug the first drinking water well, he claimed that the strange tasting water cured his rheumatism. Mrs. Lynch claimed that the water had cured her arthritis as well. Mineral-enriched water had prime medicinal value in the 1800s, and soon word got out about its healing properties. A second well was dug several years later, and then a third. It was out of this third well that a woman with dementia often drank. Guess what happened? Her dementia was miraculously cured and local children started calling this third well the crazy water well. And eventually the term crazy water was coined for the miraculous water that flowed from the earth. News about the crazy water spread far and wide by the early 1900s. Mineral wells became the south's greatest health resort with hundreds of mineral wells, bathhouses, spas, hotels, and the like. People traveled from all over the country in hopes of experiencing the healing power of the crazy water themselves. As you probably imagine, many of these visitors were old and infirm, and many never made it out of town alive. Today, Mineral Wells is a shadow of its former self. While it still has some industry, it operates mainly as a tourism and retirement community. But don't let that fool you. In this town, Faulkner's famous quote holds deeper meaning for those of us who choose to call it our home. The past never dies, it's not even past. After I'd been on the force about a month, I had my first experience with the strangeness of mineral wells. We had gotten a frantic 911 call about a dead body. I still remember the address. 200 Hubbard Street, the address of the Baker Hotel. I was working nights at the time. Apparently, that's where the rookies start. And the call came in about 12.30 a.m. My partner and I were in the area, and it didn't take us very long to get there. When we arrived, the 911 caller was gone, but the body was still there, just as described. It turned out to be a young woman. She was sprawled out on the red brick steps that led up to the front entrance. Her back obviously broken and her head completely smashed. Also, she was totally nude. It was the first dead body that I'd seen and it was gruesome. You didn't have to be an expert to determine she had fallen from a great height. I remember looking up and seeing if there were any balconies that she could have fallen from. There weren't but there were plenty of windows. And since this was an old hotel, they don't have the safety features that modern day hotel windows have. In fact, many of the windows were open. I later learned the Baker Hotel had shut down in the 70s, 
but no one would ever admit as to why. We secured the scene and called in the investigative unit. The girl turned out to be 29-year-old Pamela Allen. She had been a resident of Mineral Wells her whole life and worked as a manager at a local cafe. On the night in question, Pamela had been out with some girlfriends at a bar that was near the hotel. One of the girls who had been with her told the investigators that they had all been hanging out on the seventh floor of the hotel drinking after the bars closed when they suddenly realized Pamela was nowhere to be found. They began looking for her and found her clothes in a pile in one of the rooms next to an open window. That's when they realized that she had fallen and called 911. There were only two bits of information they could offer. The first was that Pamela had been overheard saying she needed to go meet Virginia, but none of them knew any friend of hers by that name. The second was that there were rumors in town that she had been having an affair with the owner of the cafe she worked at but none of them admitting ever seeing her with him. When I heard all this, it seriously disturbed me. By all accounts, Pamela was a well-adjusted young woman and had no reason to kill herself. Why did she do it? And why did she take all her clothes off before jumping? After the full investigation, I didn't hear much about the case again. The investigators thought the circumstances were odd, but odd things happened in Mineral Wells, and they had more pressing cases. The case was closed. It wasn't until about five months later, as I was poring over manuscripts at the Historical Society's archives, that I came across a passage that made my hair stand on my neck. Here's what it said. One story involving the Baker Hotel revolves around a woman known as Virginia Brown, a resident of the hotel who was the alleged mistress of T.B. Baker, the owner and builder of the hotel. According to legend, Virginia was upset over the affair and drunkenly plunged to her death after jumping from the 13th floor. Many visitors to the hotel before it closed in 1972 have reported seeing a bloody woman sometimes wearing a red dress and sometimes nude, roaming the halls after midnight. This freaked me out, and I was about to nope right on out of there. But before I did, I realized there was a reference to another document. It turned out to be the hotel's ledger from the mid-1900s. I searched for Virginia Brown's name and found it. She had been a resident at that time, and there was a notation under the room heading, Room 714. It was then I knew there was something extremely strange going on in Mineral Wells, Texas. But what exactly? <laughs>